Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's me again. Um, I can't do the comedy act like Tracy did. So you're just going to get straightforward uh, new varieties from me. Uh, it wasn't a great year for new varieties, I have to say. It's probably the worst year I can remember. When you think of the seedling classes at Whistling, <coughs> when there was eight seedling classes and ten entries uh, totaling over that eight classes, there were no larger giants at the trials at Whistling or at um, or at Ripon in the new variety classes. So <coughs> it was a poor year, um, but we made the best of it, and we'll see the best of what there was around. Uh, my particular uh, trial, I lost. 100 in the main beds and uh, 30 out of the 90 new varieties and everything was very low uh, because the plot was waterlogged, it was raining every day in, uh, in June and July in Essex and it, it wasn't a vintage year but we made them through and there were some good varieties but uh, there was no superstar that would be head and shoulders uh, above the others like we've had in recent years, we have had Twilight for in this year We've had uh, Blight Stella in each year, we've had Pop Vent and Christopher in each year, and dailies like that, as soon as you see them, you know, you know there is something special. But there wasn't one like that that I would say is head and shoulders about all the rest. But you're going to see what I grew. If we start off, Paul, I'll stand over here and we'll do it together. That focus a little bit, Paul, that one. That's it. Um, that was the only giant deck that was any good. It came from Tony Kingdom. It's called uh, Hannah uh, J, Sherwell Hannah J, uh, from Tony Kingdom. It's a seedling from Maybelline, and uh, it's got a bit more orange in it than Maybelline. It was 11 inches across, uh, grew about four foot tall, and it's a good giant deck. David Gillam's got his eye on it, and uh, he's nicked one of me two tubers, so you'll be seeing that, no doubt, in the giant classes next year. And that's called Sherwell Hannah J. Uh, this is uh, Endeavour. Um, uh, Endeavour comes from Glenmark uh, Endeavour. Glenmark Endeavour comes from Australia. Uh, it was raised uh, in, in Australia and it's a yellow giant decorative from Alf Hardiman in Australia. It's uh, 11 inch bloom, grows about three and a half, four foot tall. I'm not sure it's good enough for our show benches, but um, I've grown it for two years and it's quite a good uh, giant deck. That is Glenmark and Devon. This has been around a little while now, it's not brand new, uh, but there was six particularly good blooms of AC Jerry, which was raised um, by Richard Posh, uh, which was raised by Ken Greenaway in America. It's a big, it's a big giant semi-cactus, 13 inch blooms if you go at three up. It's got good form. And Robert Reed had three outstanding blooms in the Vincent Parker, which he won uh, at with Wisley. And uh, that's a giant semi cactus, and it's called A.C. Jerry. This one comes as a pleasant surprise. I've seen the dailies of Today book uh, came yesterday, and there's a really good picture of A.C. Red in it. And uh, this was on a rainy day when I went out and took my pictures, and uh, it's a uh, large semi-cactus, but with a bit of a giant semi-cactus form. But it's one I'll definitely grow again. I just had the one plant given to me, and uh, it was very good. Grows about three foot high. It was raised by um, Greenaway, Ken Greenaway in America. And it was 10 inch blooms, and it's called AC Red from America. This is another American variety. About 50% of what I grew this year was came from uh, America, not directly from America, but there are people in this country that import at their own cost every year and are kind enough to give me a couple of plants. And this has been around, I've owned this for two or three years now. It's Clearview Jonas from Richard Parshell in America. It's a 10 you could grow it as a medium semi-cactus or a large semi-cactus. I think it's better as a large. And um, it's called uh, Jonas, Clearview Jonas from Richard Barshell. Uh, this is on the market now. It's called uh, Maggie, Newfield Maggie from John Sayers in the north. Does that come a bit better? Clear the pool? A bit better. And uh, it's a large deck. It's on David Hall's catalogue this year. And it's white based, overlaid with lavender. And it's a large deck. 
Um, we don't see much of it around on the show bench yet, but I'm sure you will. They're 10 inch blooms, it grows about three and a half, four foot tall. I've grown it in the garden, and I grew it four up, and it was a, a, a good variety. And that's called Newfield Maggie from John Sayers. This one, I saw some outstanding blooms at this. I've never grown outstanding blooms. This is one of my blooms of uh, AC Casper uh, from Ken Green away again. But there were some uh, blooms that came to the Hyde Hall show uh, from uh, Jay Gregory, and they were outstanding. It got best large in show, and they were beautiful. And it will go 10 inches. I think it's all about the stock, and I've been promised a bit of his stock, so what's his space? But it can be outstanding. It's a reflexing white large decorative, and uh, it was raised, as I say, by um, by Ken Greenaway again. Okay, let's see, Casper. Uh, this was the winning most seedling of the year. It's called uh, Essex Eastwood Essex from John Sharp in our county, my county of Essex, and it's a really top-sized medium semi, right up to size. Uh, bright yellow, it won the seedling classes at uh, the Maori Trophy at Wisley and the equivalent class at Ripon and looks a good one for the future. Medium semi cactus called Eastwood Essex. Hello. Not the same. This is Les Jackson's new one. Uh, this is called Charlie, Hillcrest Charlie. He was going to call it Hillcrest Charlie Jackson, but he thought the name was a bit long, so he's decided to call it Hillcrest Charlie. It's a white medium semi cactus. He told me to grow it seven up, and I did, but it was a bit undersized. I think it needs pushing, unlike Eastwood Essex, it can be grown perhaps seven or eight up. This one would need growing five up to get it to size. He told me seven, and I always do what the racer says the first year, and then you learn the first year, and you do what you think the second year. So next year, I think it'll be a five up, a bit more feed, take all the side tubes off and maybe we'll get a bit more bulk into it. But it's got good form, good depth, uh, good centre, uh, but it, was, it just didn't have the oomph that the Eastwood Essex had, the power. It lacked a bit of power that you need in a top class exhibition variety. Uh, and it's called Hillcrest uh, Charlie and it's raised by uh, Les Jackson. This is a new one that came from America. It's Clearview Maze. I don't think I grew it as good as I will do next year. They told me it was a large, so I grew it four up and pushed it for large. But it made it a bit heavy in course. And I think seven up as a medium, we might see it better of that. It comes from Richard Parshell in America, and it's a yellow uh, medium semi cactus, and it's called Clearview Maze. This has been around uh, second season for this one. It's called uh, Cameron, Clearview Cameron, uh, from Richard Parshell. It's white based, overlaid with lavender. It's a bicolour, and it's lovely in the garden. And uh, I've had some good shape blooms of it as well. But I think its forte would be cut flower and garden use. It's a beautiful, pretty thing. Uh, white overlaid with lavender, and it's called Clearview Cameron from Richard Parshell. From the same razor is Clearview Claret. This isn't the best shot of it, but it can be very, very good. I've had some well-formed blooms of that one. And it's a medium semi-cactus again. And it's bright red, grows about four foot in height, seven up, and it's a nice variety. It's called Clearview Claret, and it's raised by uh, Richard Parshall. Uh, I've had a lot of dailies over the years, you know, both. Uh, this is the best one he's ever sent me. It's a uh, Spennythorn Allison. It's a medium deck in a ready pinkish colour. Um, I knew I had to push it, so I grew it five up, and I've got eight inch blooms. And it's the best he's ever sent me. It's a nice medium deck, and a colourful medium deck. And it's called Spennythorn Allison uh, from Eric Booth in Stockton on Tees. Did that come a bit better, I think, Paul? That's it. Uh, this is uh, John Cullen's new variety. It's called Our Mum, after his mother, who died a couple of years ago. And uh, I grew it as a medium, uh, stroke large. He wasn't sure whether it was best as a medium or a large. And probably it's better as a medium, I would say, or maybe as a large. 
And I've worked four up as a large, and I might work a couple of clients also seven or eight up. But it's a yellow medium deck, and it's called Our Mum, uh, raised by John Cullen, who's with us today. This is the finest medium deck I've ever grown, I think, and I've been growing them a while. Um, it's called Rycroft and Isa. Uh, it's one you need to grow well. I, I grew it six up, one plant Phil Godswell gave me the year before last, and I, I grew it six or seven up. And they were a bit undersized, beautiful, but only seven and a half inch blue. It's a bit like the, uh, uh, the one of those Jacksons. And I thought I need it a bit bigger. So I'll give it the gun this year, uh, in 2021. I grew them five up, stripped them down, and it done a thing, it f funny thing to the blue, the stem of the bloom. And when they were beautiful stems and beautiful blooms the year before, it just caused it to clock face a bit. And it was more on the transit to the journey where it nodded forward. They're big, heavy blooms, and they tend to fall forward a bit. And they were accused of being uh, clock faced, and perhaps rightly so, not actually like a dinner plate on a wall, more just off 45 degree angle. So I'll go back to growing it six, uh, six up next year and get to work with some polish and try and get the stems right. But it's a beautiful thing. It's called Rycroft Lisa and it's raised by Phil Godsmark. This is uh, a new one. Uh, Raymond Duffy gave me the whole tube of this one. It's called Nadina Ruth and it comes from uh, America. It's raised by Kay Connell in America. And it's not a big flower. I grew it seven up, like I usually do with all the mediums, if no one tells me different. But it's a five up job, and it's pretty. It's a very pale, creamy pink uh, with, with a darker centre. Very finely petaled, and it's called Nadina Booth from Kate Connell in America. This one, that come a bit better, Paul. Uh, that is Happy Perfect, another one Raymond gave me. It's a, a medium fim, full size this one, seven up, uh, pink and yellow blends, and uh, very attractive. Raised by Hasselhofer, Peter Hasselhofer in Austria, and an attractive fim for the future. Now this has been around a long while. Phil Godsmark got it from Australia a few years back and was kind enough to give me a bit of it. And in turn, I've given it uh, to uh, John Willett, and John Willett, no doubt, has passed it on to other people. And it's called Atara Picardy. It's a lavender and white blended variety uh, from America, from Bill Tapley in, in Australia, rather. Bill Tapley in Australia. Um, seven up, uh, beautiful blooms, and it's a good show bench um, thing. Uh, that's called Atara Picardy. From Australia. Not a good picture of this, but in the flesh, this is a really brightly coloured uh, variety from Phil Godsmark. It's called Rycroft Caroline's, Caroline's Beauty. It's on the market this year. And uh, uh, Carmen had 14 plants of this in her bed. She only grows three or four varieties, and this year the varieties were Rycroft Jill, which is very prolific, and you'll see it in a minute, Formby Art, which is the old standby by colour, white and pink and Caroline's Beauty, that was the three in, in, in her patch this year and they all did well and she's going to grow the same three again next year. Very prolific, uh, very brightly coloured, uh, probably a bit deep for an exhibition bloom but uh, a beautiful garden and cut flower variety and it's called Caroline's Beauty and it's raised by Phil Godsmark in Sussex. This is a German one, we never did find out the razor, it's called Linzer Kleinwalk uh, from Germany. Uh, good cut flower, again, I only had a few uh, cuttings of it last year, and I see that the tuber is alive, so that'll be one for Carmen in the future. Uh, stems like iron, uh, reddish blooms, ready pinkish blooms, uh, and it's called Linzer Kleinwalk from Germany. This is a show variety, it's called Ma Moray Ashley from Cole McLaughlin in Australia. Uh, one of the ones that Phil got over and let me try. And uh, it, it's a beauty. It's on the lines of a Pam Howden, but uh, slightly bigger uh, and better coloured. Um, and I, had, I think I've gathered 12 or 13 blooms on this plant. And uh, it's a really good show variety. It's called Moray Ashley uh, from Cole McLaughlin in Australia. 
This is, uh, this is Cyril, Cyril Watkins' new variety. It's called Phyllis, um, and um, Polventum Phyllis, and it's a nice looking small cactus. If you go on, I've got a set of uh, three of it. Uh, this one, go, go to the next shot. Yeah, that's it. These are, you might get it slightly clearer, Paul. Uh, this is uh, Raymond Duffy's bars of it. Mine got drowned. Um, but I did manage to save a tuber, so I'll be propagating it growing again. It's a nice looking pink small cactus. Uh, Raymond showed this vase at the Kent Show and I took its picture. And it's called Polventum Phyllis uh, from Cyril Hopkins in Cornwall. This is another American one, it's called Gold Rush, Holly Hill Gold Rush uh, from America. Ted Kennedy is a raiser of the Holly Hill varieties and uh, it's got good form and low growing, about three and a half foot plant, a uh, bit of an unhealthy look to it early on, but when it flowered it was lovely and it's called Hill, Holly Hill Gold Rush uh, from Ted Kennedy in uh, America. Uh, from the same raiser is this one, Jeanette, Holly Hill Jeanette. It's a straight cactus, a bit gappy for exhibition purposes. Uh, and none of these plants were really strong. I think uh, you would do better with them than what I perhaps have done on the wet pads this year. But this is Holly Hill Jeanette, uh, raised by <coughs> Ted Kennedy. Uh, this one is Calm and Savory uh, from America again. It's uh, Sullivan, John Sullivan in America. It's a red. It was really a spindly plant. How much of the, uh, the ground that was in the waterlogged patch, as you know, uh, but how much was the plot and how much was the uh, variety, we'll find out, because I'll probably grow it again. And it's called Carmen Savory uh, from America, from John Sutherland in America. Uh, these are Australian ones. Uh, this is from the late John Menzel, uh, the president of the America, of the Australian Daily Society, who died sadly last year, and this is called Winky Pat, and it's raised by John, and it's a pink small deck with good form, whether it would take on the diet or not, I wouldn't know, but uh, it was a, a, a good variety, and easy to grow, three and a half, four foot, uh, seven up, and uh, it was nice. Winky Pat. This one is Winky Raven from the same razor, very dark uh, you can uh, imagine uh, those curtains, the raven coloured wings. And uh, seven up, small deck, and was good. Good form, good centre on a four foot plant. And that one is Winky Raven from John Menzel. Uh, this is caught on straight away. This is Tracy Diane, and I've never seen so many vases around the south of England of a new dahlia. Uh, then I did this. It's on release now, raised by Robin Moiser uh, from Kent. And um, if you can grow the other Dianes, then this would be great for you. It's a break of colours. All the others that we've got are all yellow, as you know, Primrose and Habit and, and uh, Cream and uh, Windholm and Ruskin. Uh, and this is the, the colour break that we needed. Uh, it's white with a lavender flush. You would grow it just the same as you would grow Windholm Dian. For me, that's seven up. And uh, it's, a, it's a good new variety. I thought it might be difficult to match the colours, but the boys were putting uh, uh, putting good vases up at this, and I think you got best vases somewhere, didn't you, Raymond? Did this one of the shows did I notice? Um, I think the best vases it's Yeah, yeah, it done well. They all used it. They all used it in their championships, and it's called Tracy Diane, and it's raised by Robin Moiser. But it's um, Westerton Gatehouse, it's on the market now. It's uh, raised by Gordon Hodgson and it's a low grower, three and a half foot for me. Bigger blooms of, uh, than his sunset, Westerton sunset, and in a very dark red. Um, it's a good variety, I've grown it for two years. Uh, but low growing, I have to grow them in different beds of height more than anything else. They should get these tall dahlias that swamp the short ones. So this, this goes in the bed with the shorter ones. And it's called Western Gatehouse, raised by um, Gordon Hodgson. 
This is a good variety. I've grown it for three years now. Uh, Phil usually gives us to me in their third year, and uh, it grows quite a lot of seedlings. It grows over a thousand seedlings. Not at the moment because he's moving house and he's got the plots upside down, but in a normal year he would grow over a thousand seedlings. He doesn't do any cross pollinating, he just he's got an eye for a dahlia and he goes along with a bundle of canes and every one that looks good he sticks a cane in by the first year seedling and then keeps the ones with canes in and then whittles them down. And I don't normally get them until they're three years old. Uh, unlike some raisers uh, that send them to you in their second year or even their third year, um, that these are usually tried and tested. I've never had one of these dailies that's been a real washout. They've either been really good or just good. And this is called Rycroft Gold. Um, it needs growing well. It needs growing about six up to get it up to diet size. But it's a lovely form and it's called Rycroft Gold uh, from Phil Godswell. Small cap. This was one I got from the New Forest. It was uh, from Brian Madders. It's called Forest Lamplight because he lives quite near uh, the New Forest. And um, he said grow it like a Diane, and I did, but I don't think it's quite the quality of a Diane. But it's yellow, it's a small deck, and it's called Forest Lamplight from Brian Madders. On to the small balls. Uh, this one is from Les Stothard. It's called Swan Lake, like the Swan Lake. A very low grower, grew about three and a half. I covered it, uh, three and a half foot to four foot under cover. I covered it with thought, because I thought it might mark, but it, it, it didn't. It's as hard as nails. All the new varieties I've grown normally are all outside. If I think one might be better underneath, under the covers, I'll stick it under there. And I grew a row of it, and I helped Les put his seedling uh, exhibits up, Ripon and Wisley, and he done well with it. It's about a, a seven up, it comes to size quite easily, and it's a small ball called Blight and Swan Lake. And there's uh, one of Les's exhibits, I don't know whether it's Ripon or Wisley, but he showed it both classes, and uh, that's what it looks like, Blight and Swan Lake on the stage. Uh, this was sent to me by Frankie Taylor from Sale in Cheshire, and uh, it, it's a seedling from Decara Superb. I didn't manage to get hold of a uh, plant of Decara Superb itself, and I wanted to compare the two. But um, it seems as though it's a bit more pinker, and possibly slightly different uh, pattern lay. But it's a seedling from Decara Superb, unnamed, uh, and it's raised by Frankie Taylor. Uh, this is a new one that's on David Hall's catalogue. It's called Porcelain, Right Rock Porcelain. It's a really big, strong grower. Uh, and if you grow it, you don't want any less than 12, and on my ground, probably 16 up. It really is prolific. And uh, even at 12 up, I was getting blooms that were going over the miniature size. So it might be possible to push it up as a small deck, but I think it'd be better to grow it down at 16 up for me with a light disc bug. Uh, doesn't mark at all, grows five foot in height, tall grower, and uh, I think that might make a mark for itself. There are a lot of good uh, white small uh, miniature decks, that's the problem. There's Rycroft Misty, there's, uh, there's Marksman, there's uh, 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 Jane, uh, and there's quite a lot of uh, Skelmsdale uh, Jane. And it's a strong section and a strong colour, but this might have a place in it, and it's called Rycroft Porcelain. Uh, from Phil Godsmark. Twilight Boy came on the list, uh, on the market. David Hall sent me three plants, I think two or three years ago now. And it was one of them that jumped out of the bed and got me by the throat. It was good from the start. <coughs> uh, as was Blight and Stella. You just see these dailies, and if you've been looking at dailies like I have for the last 40, 50 years, you sort of get an idea that it's special. Uh, uh, and it was special, special. It's a special colour as well. It's like a deep violet colour, which we haven't got in any other dahlia that I can think of. Uh, four inch blooms, grown eight or nine up, dependent on your ground. Um, grows about three and a half, four foot tall, makes a good tuber, um, and it's, it's here to stay, I think. It's called Twilight Boy, and it's raised by Gabby Hayes. That'll come a bit better, I think. 
That's uh, Skills Now, Jane, and uh, that's come on the market uh, as a breath of fresh air. I went up and gave a talk at Crooklands a couple of years ago, and Ian Sutherland brought me a couple of plants uh, with him for me. And uh, it's been a sensation right from the start, really. A chimpanzee could grow that. It's, it's one of them easy dahlias, and you never see a bare bloom of it. Grows about five foot for me. I grow it nine up. Every bloom is just the right size. They match up well. And it's a daily that you don't really need to grow bunches and bunches of because it's easy to get a vase. And it came through down south this year and there were some good vases. Paul is doing the camera work for me today. He got best vase of dahlias at the strong of Kencho. And there were some good vases against it. But five blooms of uh, Scalmersdale Jane. Uh, took the award for best vase in Chile. Yeah, it's it's good good proper death, doesn't it? So yeah, it's, yeah. Um, you know, it's proper it was good from the start, though, wasn't it? Yes. Even them first couple of plants. It's yeah. one of them when it comes out here, you know, yeah. yeah. And it's got health. It's got the health and strength with it as well. And sometimes people forget that. You know, it's all sort of like having a good daily, like Greenway Zoe, so and you're trying to fight it to get it down to size and all that sort of thing. You don't really want that, do you, as a grower? Don't you just want to donk it in the ground, maybe give it a double stop, and then grow your nine or your eight up. It was over in uh, Rossendale Lewis. Was it? Yeah. Uh, this is one I've always liked, uh, from the late John Digweed. It's called Patsy, Marston Patsy. It's a yellow uh, miniature deck. I've never had enough to grow a bed of it, but uh, I've got eight pot troopers this year, and uh, I think I'll grow a bed of that. That cola doesn't really do it justice, but I like it and uh, I'm going to go with it this year. It's called Marston Patsy from the late John Digweed and goes tall, five foot tall, and uh, that's Marston Patsy. This is uh, Jill, Rycroft Jill from Phil Godsmile. It's not uh, the best picture of it, it's more refined in the flesh than that. And all the pictures I've seen, both on David's ca uh, catalogue and in the bulletin last year, none of them done it justice, and this doesn't really do it justice. It's a refined bloom, and it's the most prolific, lovely daily to grow. It's got stems like iron, even at 16 up, which I grew in 16 up, like this bud, and Carmen must have had 600 blooms for her bunches, uh, and it really is a prolific, lovely thing. Doesn't need to be covered, and she's got it marked down for next year. I grew a bed of it, and she had another, I don't know, 14 of it, I suppose. So we had about 44 between us. And um, but I didn't. I dare not go and nick her blooms from my uh, from my exhibits because they are uh, they're for her bunches. But that is right off Jill, uh, raised by Phil Godsmile, municipal. Uh, this is uh, very similar to Swan Lake, but it's smaller. It's called Cloud Nine, Blight and Cloud Nine. And it's another white from uh, Les Stothard. And again, I grew three plants of it. And uh, it was good, but it tends to go oversized. So the mistake I made was probably growing <coughs> eight or nine up. It's probably a 12 up, I would say, to keep it down within the ring. You don't want to be fighting the rings all the time. but. Um, he had it in the seedling classes and it looked good. It grows about four and a half foot, no, about four foot tall, maybe four foot tall. And it's called Blighton Cloud Nine uh, from Les Dothar. This is another one of these. And this might be the best of the three of these. This is Amanda, Blighton Amanda. And uh, I've got one tuber and I'm hoping I'll be able to grow a little bit of it. And uh, we both had the same problem. And if you look in the foreground there, in the background there, you can see that white and red bloom. Well, that is the same variety, yeah. believe it or not. <coughs> and, and that's its tendency, not to throw that many white petals, but there were white petals in every bloom. Uh, normally one, normally two. And this plant, it nearly had all red, red blooms and just the odd one with a white petal. So I wrote it out, and so has he. We've got one tuber each, and hopefully, uh, I'll have it like that. And if you had it like that, you'd use it in a, a bowl championship. It's called Blight and Amanda. It's a miniature bowl and it's raised by Les Stothard. Uh, this is Phil's uh, wizard, uh, Rycroft wizard uh, from Phil Godsmark. It's a yellow miniature bowl again. I grew a row of it and showed it a couple of times. Uh, it's nice, that's a young bloom of it, but it goes right back on the stem. Uh, and it's got good form, 
and it's called Right Rock Wizard from Phil Cosmo. Yeah, that's a shame. I can't really see it properly, can you? Um, that's uh, Blight and Red Ace, uh, which is on David Hall's catalogue. And uh, there was a particularly good vase of it at the National. We didn't see much of it around, but there was a particularly good vase in the Oscroft Trophy in the winning exhibit, staged by Steve Carter. And it looked good. And uh, he showed me a picture of it earlier today, or his mate did. And he had really heavy, nice, heavy centres in it. Uh, for me down south, it was a bit thin in the middle. I only ever grew two plants of it. But uh, it's got wonderful form. It goes right back. It's not one that you would grow like a Germander, you would grow it more like a, uh, a Twilight Boy or a Stella, you would grow it eight or nine up to get it to good size to go with the other big varieties like Germander and Mary's Germander, as it might get out proud. But it's, it looks a lovely variety, and a lovely colour that didn't fade, it grows about four and a half foot tall, and it's called uh, Blighton uh, Red Ace from Lestoffer. It's a good part of Scotland. Was it? Very, very good. Yeah, I didn't see much of it, but what I did see was really good. Uh, onto the ponds. This is the large pond called Piccolo, Happy Piccolo from uh, uh, from Austria, from Hasselhofer in Austria. Lovely, lovely garden dahlia, lovely cut flower. I don't know if you match two blooms, let alone five, but they're really pretty uh, and nice. And it's called Happy Piccolo, uh, and it was raised in uh, by Hasselhofer in Austria. Uh, this is a show daily, and I'm going to grow a, f a few. I don't normally grow a large pot, but this is a good large pot. It's called Habit uh, Red Point, Habit Red Point uh, from Hasselhofer, and that is an exhibition variety. Good form, uh, good grower, clean plant, didn't fade, and, and it's called Habit Red Point. Uh, this was uh, Rosemary Dawn and Rosemary Blush. It was noticeable at both shows to me that the, the spot appears to be smaller than the parent. Rosemary Dawn was a good quarter, three half inch bigger than the spot. Whether that's all David had is David Hall's spot and uh, Peter Greenway's original. Uh, that's Rosemary Dawn and Rosemary Blush. But they were considerably smaller on both occasions. So if I was growing it, I'd grow slightly less blooms on the spot than I would in the parent. But it won its uh, sport classes at Wisley and at Ripon. And uh, as I say, the classes were thin at both shows, as was the trial. There were no giants at all in the seedling classes at Wisley or Ripon, and indeed at the Leeds trials, large or giants. So it just shows you we do need, uh, races do need to give us a few more of the bigger sort of sections. So that's Rosemary Dawn and Rosemary Blush. Uh, this is my own spot of uh, uh, Pink Mayer's Ronda. It's been said it's very much like Ronda, but the blooms that I showed at Wisley were supplied to me by uh, Andrew Aspetals, who were uh, whose blooms were much paler than mine. To me on the plot, and I've got a shot of 12 blooms in two glasses, and they're really pink. So I think it is a spot, and I think Pink Mayer's Ronda will do well. It, uh, it won the runner-up to the best vase of palms at Wisley. Andrew Atkins will won it with, uh, with nine mares on them, which we'll see in a minute. And uh, he got the runner-up to it with nine pink mares on from another exhibit. So it, it's a good variety. It grows like uh, mares on and all the other rondas, low growing, fairly easy to match. Uh, I think Andrew likes mares on of the three. Ivers Ronda, Mayers Ronda and Pink Mayers Ronda purely because every bloom matches with Mayers Ronda and he's threatening at the moment to just grow that because it's so easy to get the colours right. Uh, but it's not bad that one and it's called Pink Mayers Ronda and it was raised by me. Just finish off with a couple of uh, memories of the national show. I'm a bit tired by this time. Carmen and I spend the whole night um, uh, staging and even longer this year with the floral foam. Um, but we spend the whole night, we always stage something over 30 vases. And uh, this is the winning exhibit in the Terry Clark and, uh, by, Phil, uh, by Phil Watson. Uh, and the varieties were Kenora Challenger at the back, 
Winholm Dyer on the left, Eastwood Moon on the right, uh, Kiwi Gloria on the right, and uh, Barbary Surprise on the left. The Kiwi Gloria got best bars of a small practicing show, and the, the uh, Barbary Surprise was runner up uh, to Andrew Robinson's Bateshead Festival, and that got runner up to the best bars of a miniature or a small practicing show. And it was a lovely exhibit. And uh, my friend Andrew Aspital was second to him. Okay. And uh, this is Andrew's uh, nine from uh, my last uh, my last shot, and it's the nine poms from the Terry Clark, which went on to get best poms in show, and runner up to Graham McFarlane's Eastwood Moonlight as the runner up to the best bars of Davies in show, and uh, that is Mayor's Rodner and uh, his son could really stage him. Yeah, he took his son hour and a half to stage that bars, nine points, in the New Acre War. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you, Dave. Um, I just want to see the daily flowers, and I just am amazed by your memory of varieties and raises from not doing that off a piece of paper. It's tremendous. Thank you, Dave. Um, now we're running nicely out of time, so you can all stay. Look, the mid. Rock and roll. We're going in. We're going. If anyone wants a quick comfort break for five minutes, just while we change the technology over, we'll then go on to the man himself. Yeah. 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 Mr. Sullivan.